Okay, this video is going to show us how to display the contents of the basket, um, but also uh, show us how to take items back out of the basket. Okay, so to start off, what we need is somewhere for this basket to be displayed. Now I'm going to display, if I'm looking at my code for my browse page, um, I'm going to probably put the basket after the search box. Okay, so the search box stays at the top. But I want it before I display my product. So I'm going to create a div for this. So id equals basket. Uh, runner equals server. Okay, so that's going to be dynamically generated again. <clears throat> okay, right, back to our code for browse. So if I go up to my page load, what I need to do is display my basket content. Okay, uh, so I've got all these products bits down here. I only really want to be showing a basket if a user's logged in, so I'm going to put it after this switch. Okay, so I'm going to do it after the switch. I could put it in other places, um, but that's where I want to want to do it. Okay. So I'm going to do display basket. So I'm going to create a super string called display basket. So generate method stub. It just creates it down here for me. Delete that exception bit. Now, what I need to do <coughs> is see if I've got a, an order ID. Um, so let's have a go at doing that. So you just say if storage, because obviously there is no basket if there is no order currently ongoing. So if it's not equal to minus one, don't bother doing anything. So I won't put anything in the basket. But if it is, what I want to do is get hold of the current basket data. So I'm going to hold that in the data view. I'm going to call it DV basket data dot get basket which doesn't exist and I'm going to pass it the current order ID so I'm going to say storage dot current order ID okay so this will allow this basket code to pick up any basket as long as it's given the ID so let's go and generate that in our data and go to it Right, let's change the name of the parameter to purchase for me. That's going to be purchase ID. Remember, that's what my unique ID was for that. <coughs> right, this is a case where we're actually going to create um, a quite complicated query um, that's going to involve joining data together. Okay, because my basket, I want the purchase ID, but I want to know what's in the basket. But the information that's in the basket is from purchase details. So I'm going to cheat now, and I'm going to get access to do the work for me. Okay, so I'm going to load up my database, and I'm going to go to create, and I'm going to create a new query design, and I'm going to take information from uh, purchase. Purchase DL, so I'll purchase, purchase DL, but I also want to be able to just give the item description. Okay. And because I did my relationships, it knows how to join all this together. Right, so for each item, I want all the description of the item. Well, no, I don't actually. I want um, item title. Um, I want item ID. And I want how much it costs, the price. But I also want this purchase DL ID. Because I want to be able to delete these. So I want to be able to delete this record at some point. Okay. So I'm going to pick up that information as well. Now, that's no use to me like this. But if I look at my SQL view for this query I've now got 
this built for me. Okay. So I've got... Right, it looks pretty horrendous, and that's why we've had access do this for us. Okay. Now the only thing missing from it is a wear clause, because we want to pick up a particular purchase ID. Okay, so if we go quickly back to our design view, so we can say where the purchase ID, and we can use either this one or this one. In fact, we actually technically don't need that that one because we've we've got the purchase ID we're looking for there. Okay, um, so we'll simplify this a little bit. But it's the same items that we need. Right, so we're looking up a particular purchase ID. So in the criteria box, we can put our question mark in square brackets. Okay, so if we run that and I say purchase ID 8, I get that last one I did on the previous video. That's the information I want. Okay, so I've got my purchase detail ID. That will allow me to delete stuff. And every other bit of information I need is there. So if we go back to SQL view, we get this. Okay, you probably won't be able to see that much, but just copy all of the code and go back to your Visual Studio project, which I will we'll find in a minute. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Got about 15 million different things open. Right, so we're going to create our SQL and we're going to say equals, quote, and then paste what we just took from access. Okay. Right, we need to keep this in line, so put a space at the end, double quote to finish that string off, and put a plus. Tab this over a bit, start it off with a double quote, leave a space at the end, put a plus. Tab the where bit over. Now, you'll notice with the where, it's got all these brackets. It doesn't need any of them, so I'm going to get rid of all those brackets there. And I don't need the square brackets but I do need to put a double quote to end it. So I've actually got access to make this query for me because it's too complicated. Okay, But it nicely splits them on three lines for us so we just need to tidy up the strings of it. Right, so we've got to create a parameter for this. Okay, But I'm going to show you another way because if I've just got one number here I could actually because it's a number, it makes it simple. Get rid of that bracket. I could just actually say at the end, purchase ID, the parameter. Okay, there. So I can just add that on directly. So I've built it into the SQL this time. All right. Okay, so now I just need to execute that. So if I say, return execute and fill this SQL no parameters in this one okay I only ever do that when I've got one number really I've shown you most of the time I've created parameters but this time I decided to just do it like this okay you can stick to the parameters if you want it's just I'm trying to save time on the videos so that's going to pull basket contents for a particular purchase ID. So let's go back to our browse code because that's where we were doing it. Okay, so what we want to do now is run through these records <clears throat> and display some stuff in the basket. Okay, right, so I'm going to do this in a different method. I've shown you adding controls, I'm going to just add text. To the basket div that I created. So this basket div here in my HTML, I'm just going to add code to it. So I'm going to start off. I'm going to say basket contain uh, dot in inner HTML, and that's the bit between the tags. Equals basket contains. Now my DV basket should have a count in there. Okay, so I'm just going to put that in there to start with. 
Okay, so that's the first line of text I'm going to put in there. Then I'm going to do a for each, and we're going to look at a data row view. So that's for each row of data. I'm just going to call this one dr in DB basket. <coughs> and then I'm just going to pull the code I want. Okay, so I'm going to start off by creating a delete hyperlink so that I can remove something. So I'm going to say basket. I'm going to say basket inner HTML plus equals right line break tag to force the thing onto the next line, and then I'm just going to create a hyperlink like we did um, before for the by to add it to a basket. So I'm going to say a href equals quote question mark a equals rem because I'm going to use that for remove and p equals so I'm going to set p to be the purchase detail id so the unique thing about my purchase link table purchase detail id okay now this is getting quite long so I'm going to carry on on the next line So then I'm going to put and I, because I want to keep track of the item it is as well, because I want to add one to the stock level. And that is item ID. So these are from the basket links. Okay. Then I'm going to finish that off with a single quote and a tag. And then I'm going to say remove from basket. And then finish off the A tag. Okay. So it looks quite long. I think I've made some stupid mistake. Well, I can't see what it is yet. Okay, well, I've done that. I forgot to put a plus again. <clears throat> so I've got a bit of text, plus the details from this. Plus a bit of text, plus the data from this, plus a bit of text, which creates a hyperlink. String concatenation might be boring, but it's incredibly useful. Um, at the end of this, I'm also going to put plus equals. Um, I want to show what the title is. So I'm going to leave a space. I'm going to use um, a colon as a separator from that remove from basket bit. And then I'm going to put the title. And I want to put the price. So, pound sign. Price. Okay, so <clears throat> remember these are coming from the items ID. So I title, item ID, price, purchase detail ID. They were the things I pulled from my query. Okay. So that's where all those things were coming from. They're not coming from these tables, they're coming from a query. Okay. What I'm also going to do is I want to keep a running total of how much is in my basket. So I'm going to create a thing, storage, and I'm going to do it as a decimal. Okay, because currency and access is a is a decimal in this, so I'm going to set that to null and I'm going to add the price on. So I'm going to say total plus equals decimal oops, decimal cast it dr price. So that will keep a running total of what my basket is for me. Okay, and when I finish my loop, my output. I'm going to say basket. I'm going to display that total basket dot inner HTML plus equals br. So I'm going to put a line break. Okay. Total cost of basket is put a pound sign plus total. Okay. So that's going to display the contents in a basket for me above the products. Right, let's just F6 it to make sure it builds. Right, let's go to our home page and run it because we have to log in to make this work now. So 
So I'll log in as Daz. Oops. So our Dave Bloke logs in. <coughs> he wants to buy um, an R type, so he buys that. And there we go at the top, our basket. So it says basket contains one item. Remove from basket, which I haven't built that code. Total cost of basket 180. Let's say I buy an outrun to add to it. And there you go. I've got remove from basket. When I move over that link, it's got at the bottom A equals rem, P equals 44, and I equals 5. So it's item 5, but the product detail ID is 44. The next one for outrun, product detail ID, P. 45 okay so that's set up so let's just build the delete part let's stop this running okay so we need to go right back to the page load event of my browse code and we need to look at the query string again okay so here's the bit that's looking at the query string and we request a and we say okay is it removed put my break in straight away so remove from order is what I'm going to so instead of adding so I'm going to click remove item from order okay so the item is in i but also we want the purchase detail id because that, that's the unique thing that I want to get rid of in case I bought two of an item okay so I'm going to say request p because that's what that was in when I built my link. So I'm looking for the things that I did when I built my link. So let's just generate that. Okay, so it should just create it below. There it is. Right, it's got enough names for the parameters. So the first one was the item ID. The second one is the purchase detail ID. Purchase detail ID. So I'm just going to rename those. Right, so the first thing I do I want to delete so I'm going to do a delete query so string SQL equals delete and I just say star I spelled delete properly it'll help from purchase detail where gold where purchase detail ID equals so I'll make sure I spelt my name field name right. And again, because this is just a single number, I'm just going to put it on the end. Purchase detail ID, the parameter that I've just passed. Okay. So I'm going to say data dot execute delete SQL with null because there's no parameters. So that'll remove the record. I then want to do my stop level adjustment. So if I scroll down to where I added an item to my order, I did this to do that. Okay, so I'm going to copy this code. So this added one on to it. So I'm going to change that. So I'm just going to put uh, add one back to stop level. So I'm a dynamically adjusting the stop level so instead of saying minus one I'm saying plus one now I need to create this as a parameter collection okay and you should see this working okay do that execute the update and hopefully that will mess about with the ID stuff Okay, so that's removed from order. So I delete the item in purchase detail with the unique identifier and then update the stock level. So if you haven't got a stock level thing, you haven't got that to do. Right, so let's just see that working. So we can see that working because we're about to see the stock levels change when we put the items back on the shelf. So log in as Dave Bloke again. <coughs> Browse me products. Right, so I'm going to buy an outrun and an R-type. Right, so there are no more R-types, so I can't buy those now. Uh, I'm going to buy another outrun. So that's down to stock level one. But I'm going to put one of the outruns back. So I'm going to say remove from basket, and hopefully the stock level will go up to two. Hey, there it goes. And I'm going to add the other outrun back. 
and they're going to put the archetype back and we can buy it again so I can keep buying it and removing it like an idiot okay the one last thing I'm I want to do and I'll do in the next video is if, if we've ended up with nothing in our basket <clears throat> if we then come away from this site we'll have a, a basket or an order that's got nothing in it so what we'll do is we'll check I'll do it quickly in the next video because I've run out of time again okay so in part seven we'll be removing unwanted orders okay